Are we live, you guys? Can you guys hear me? Let me know. So, what is up? It is me. It is the Turtle Girl in the flesh. We are live today, and we are talking about um, keeping turtles in cages and kind of like my thoughts on that. And let me know if you can hear me, by the way, because this is live. But about keeping turtles in cages and like caging animals and that type of thing, because I got this comment. So, I'm going to read you guys this comment while everyone is coming in. So this comment's actually a couple weeks old, but I got it and it was kind of intriguing to me. And I don't, I know that most people don't actually think this way, but I thought we could talk about it because it brings up an interesting topic and some interesting things. So let me read you this comment. I'm not going to tell you who made the comment because I'm not going to do that to that person. But anyways, this was what this person said regarding keeping animals caged. So they said, it's amazing how people who claim to love animals cage them the logic on people oh cute animals let's put them in a cage yay so cute let's not even think that the animal wants to be free again just for those of you who are joining i'm reading a comment um th this person left about caging animals let's not even think that the animal wants to be free that the animal doesn't want to be caged that the animal may feel sad tortured angered or likes going insane but hey they don't they don't think about their animals like this to them it's just all oh, cute animals yay she even makes jokes about feed me never does she think maybe the animal is thinking hey stop caging me hey let me be free hey let me be out of here hey why do you keep caging me then some humans are just not logical i guess i'm not logical she never considered animals shouldn't be caged or she did but she doesn't think it's wrong all she has to do is stop and think how she would feel if she was forced to be caged then and so I know that the general consensus of people doesn't, well, in my, again, okay, I probably should have said this at the beginning when I first started live streaming, but this is all just like my personal opinions and kind of, I just wanted to put it out here to see what you guys, think. is it a bit laggy, Diego? Um, can you guys, am I streaming okay? Let me check this um, so I can make sure you guys are seeing this okay. Just a second. I don't know how this is going because I've never actually used this way of streaming of YouTube. Anyway, as I was saying, um, I know in my, I don't think that most people think like this, um, but basically that guy's point was caging animals is wrong and that this animal is not happy where he is. And so I just wanted to talk about that a little bit and just see what how you guys are thinking also is my let me know if i need to be like a little bit louder because i can change my microphone and stuff anyway so what really got me not i don't get frustrated or feel personally attacked by any of these comments or anything that like is hate it's, i don't think it's even hate it's just like i don't know anyway i don't feel like hurt by this at all i just thought it was very interesting how he was um his mindset and his opinion of keeping turtles in a cage. So let's talk about that for a second. I'm sorry. I tend to ramble and repeat myself, so you have to forgive me. I am live. This is what you don't see when I'm filming videos. Anyway, I'm rambling again. So, turtles in a cage. We finally get to the point of this live stream. I'm, in my opinion, and I don't know if there's scientific anything to back this up, but in my opinion, I don't really think that... Um, I'm not going to say turtles don't have emotions, but um, they just don't think exactly the future. They don't really know that there's something better. So, for example, Hoku here, living in this 29-gallon tank, doesn't know that there could be something bigger. He doesn't know that he could be living in a pond or that he could be living in a 100-gallon tank. He doesn't know that there's something bigger. And, yes, he certainly will utilize all this space. And if I put him in, put him in something smaller, um, his condition may deteriorate, but he will still live with that. Maybe he won't thrive, but he will still live with that because he doesn't know that there's anything better. So personally, I don't feel like turtles can feel tor I don't know how to say this, like, in, because I know how I'm going to want to say it in my brain, but like, I don't want to um, put out, like, I don't want to say something that I don't really mean because I don't mean it in that way and leave it up to you guys to interpret. So let me try to be clear about this because I kind of should have wrote down what I was going to say. Anyway, so I don't think that they know that there's something bigger. And so because of that, they can suffer, but they don't know 
that um, there's something better for them. Does that make sense? Let me know if that makes sense. Sometimes I don't even make sense to myself. And then um, I don't think, though, that Honestly, if I were to actually take the situation that he's putting as in letting an animal be free because it's very evidently tortured and sad and suffering because it's in a tank. If I were to take Hoku and release him into the wild, I really don't think he would have a better life, to be completely honest, because of the fight for survival. If he was living out in the wilderness and Diamondback Turpins, let's say, take Diamondback Turpins as an example, they are native to the east coast of the United States. And so they're actually an endangered species. So they might be protected now, but if he were living back then, he could have been hunted for food. There's all kinds of natural predators. He has to go forage for food and find his own food. He has to struggle to find a mate. Conditions are not always consistent. And so in my opinion, if I were to like let my turtle go, he would have a harder time out there anyway. And obviously there is a differentiation between wild caught animals captive bred animals, animals that are living in the wild, all that. What I'm saying is if I were to take this specific turtle or any captive bred turtle that was meant to be a not domesticated pet, but a pet that is living in your home because turtles aren't quite domesticated yet, they're not going to come. Well, that could be another debate for another day. But a domesticated pet, if you were to take a pet turtle that was bred to be a pet, was born in captivity and put it out in the wild, the fact is, it probably wouldn't survive very long, and I mean, I'm not taking this comment super seriously. I just thought it brought up some interesting points that I wanted to talk about, but let me go check the chat. I think that's kind of enough ranting. You know, another thing I could rant about is keyboard warriors, but we're not going to do that today because I really, I don't like offending people, and I, I don't even really... <laughs> I don't really like calling people out. I mean, you can kind of say that's an oxymoron, I guess, because I just did, but I didn't say their name. Anyway, um, but I want to respect other people's opinions, but if you're going to share your opinion, I feel like it's also, I have a right to share my opinion as well. So that is just what I think. Let me know your thoughts in the chat, which I'm now going to go check because I know some of you were asking some questions. So let's go see what is going on in the chat. All right, so everyone is saying hello. Hello to everyone coming into the chat. Um, okay, so the Crafty J says, in my opinion, it's okay if they're captive bred. Exactly, that's what I was saying is, if it's a captive bred animal, it was already meant to live a domesticated life where some it's always being provided for. Like the thing with this turtle is, he is going to be provided for every single day of his life. He will... Oh, I just got shorter because I just sat down. Sorry, let me move this. Um, but he will have his food provided for him every day of his life. He will always have consistent need. His needs will always be met, at least in my care. And one thing people actually don't realize about turtles is how extremely hardy they are. Like, I'm sure many of you have seen those Craigslist ads where there's, there's those poor radiator sliders that are full grown this big in a 10 gallon tank. And it's so sad. But the crazy thing is, those turtles are still alive. So something I want to actually tell you all you like new turtle owners or owners who tend to worry a lot about your turtles, don't stress too much. Really, do not stress. Your turtles can adapt and maybe it isn't exactly ideal, but don't stress. Turtles are extremely hardy. And now the one exception to this is if they are babies. Babies have a very high mortality rate. Um, but that's another subject. Anyway, back to the chat because I keep getting distracted. Um, there's more people saying hello. I think caging wild caught animals isn't okay. Yes, so wild caught animals is a whole different other thing. But you should never ever be taking animals from the wild unless you like have a legitimate reason. There is no reason to go out and take something from its native habitat, from what it's used to, and putting it and subjecting it to all these different conditions that it's not used to. Now. Something I would love to know is if anyone actually knows this or has scientific research to back it up is like maybe a turtle that's been captive bred its entire life and it's only known a tank for its entire life. Of course, that turtle wouldn't know that there's like the whole pond and the whole world out there. But what if you took a, which you wouldn't do this, but if there was a captive turtle or a, sorry, excuse me, if there was a wild caught turtle and then you took that wild caught turtle and placed it into captive conditions. I'd be curious to see if that turtle would 
respond differently and it probably would respond differently but would it know that there would it still remember the pond because i don't know how turtle brains work I ha i'm not that deep into it yet maybe someday i'll like be a colonologist you know because turtles are colonians c-h-e-l-i-o-n i think i spelled it right anyway like a colonologist and studying how turtle brains fire and think but yeah, I think that is absolutely true. You should never be taking animals from the wild because that's that's where their that's where their native habitat is, and they were meant to stay in the wild. And you disrespect them where they are. Um, ah, uh, yes. Let's release all captive invasive species of turtles into a lake so they can ruin the ecosystem where they belong. Says Sawyer Klein. Sawyer, I absolutely agree. I'm sorry, I'm very behind on chat, by the way, guys. Um, I will get to there in a second. But yeah, exactly. If you released all these, especially like maybe not diamondback terrapins. But diamondback terrapins have specific needs. But red-eared sliders, for instance, if you release red-eared sliders, there's already an overpopulation of red-eared sliders. I've done like a whole video about turtle misconceptions and myths. Or actually, it was an actual live presentation. Um, but why you wouldn't release turtles into the wild? So don't release your turtles into the wild, and don't take turtles from the wild. Don't do either of those things. Just keep captive things and wild things separate. There is no need for there to be anything um, being. Um, transferred from either of those areas. Is there a lag? I'm sorry. Let me get, let you bleh, bleh, bleh. You guys also miss when I film my videos. You don't see how much I stumble over my words. So if I'm talking too fast, just let me know. Um, it's only cruel if you keep the animal in a cage too small. Yes, Jonathan, I do agree with that as well. And like I said earlier, though, turtles will still live they just won't thrive and so we should always be striving to give them the best possible needs or the best possible um like habitat that we can provide them and the best possible care we can provide them but is it really a better solution if all you have is a tiny tank and that's actually something to be debated like if you had only a tiny tank which you should be able to go out and get a bigger tank i mean you can go to Lowe's and get a 55-gallon Rubbermaid tub or tote for 50 bucks or something, and then that can be a great home for a turtle. But if you only had a single option of, like, a super tiny tank to put that turtle in, is it better to keep that turtle in a tiny tank, or is it better to release that turtle into the wild? Now, here is what I would say, is you could actually just give that post that turtle up on Craigslist or offered up for adoption, find someone else who can care for that turtle. Don't keep it for yourself in that those conditions that are not that great for it, but don't release it into the wild either. There are always other options. You just have to go look. Okay, sorry. I am going to keep moving because I'm very behind on chat. Um, so please read this. Animals, uh, I'm, I... Mm, okay, so anyway, we are going to get to some questions. So Turtle 101 Care, interesting username, um, asks, do I need a UVB? Because I have one, but I don't need have a UVA, UVA. Is that okay? So Nisi actually linked you that. Oh, wait, never mind. That's not. That's a different link. Um, UVB is, I've talked about this in another video. Nisi, thank you for being here. If you could actually link that video about UVB. But UVB is a different wavelength, actually, than UVA. And so UVB is that specific wavelength that they do need to process vitamin D3. So most household light bulbs will actually be producing UVA, I believe, but not always UVB. So UVB is the thing to look for, and that is what you are going to need for your turtle. Um, Erica Grulon says, but doesn't the Rubbermaid eventually leak with that much water? I was looking into getting that. Um, Rubbermaid totes. Now, I say this from research, not from experience, because I've never had a Rubbermaid tote. But based on, like, the amount of people I've seen using them, I think I am pretty certain that they're fine. But I would do some more of your own research and find out. And research, you guys, research is not a bad thing. It is so much fun fun and yes you can always ask me these questions and I'm always happy to try to answer your questions but what I want you guys to realize is that I am just one source and so I don't know everything I know I don't know everything I'm not an expert so sometimes it's also good to get research or 
also good to get information from other sources. So it's always cool to do a quick Google search, see what comes up. A source that I recommend is turtleforum.com. That's um, a forum made up of a bunch of individual members. And so you can get a lot of different opinions from there. And in the end, we're all just that. We're all just have our own opinions on turtle care. There's literally, like with pet care, that is what is so fascinating and so different about pet care is that honestly, I believe there is a good way to do it and a bad way to do it. But there is not like a perfect set standard and what works for some people will work for other people. And sometimes it might not, but it's all just opinions. And there are certain guidelines that should be followed, but they don't always have to be followed to a T, if that makes sense. Now, I'm not telling you to go put your turtle in a five gallon because you're like, oh, that works for me. That is like very, very extreme. What I'm saying is, formulate your own opinions based on your own experience and your own research. Okay. All right. Let's see what else is in here. What kind of fishes in your turtle aquarium? I don't know if you're talking about this fish. This is a convict cichlid. Oh, did Hoku go up to bask? He, he left us. He didn't really care. Um, but this is a convict cichlid. Now, um, I'm kind of having problems with the convicts. Nemo actually ate one of them. That might be a future video because he totally ate one of the convict cichlids downstairs or not even eat them he attacked he attacked it and then that poor fish looks so raggedy that i just euthanized him because i was like i don't want you to suffer or the turtle to try to get you again so convicts they have worked out but not in the way i really wanted to because they are kind of an aggressive fish so i'm thinking about trying some tiger barbs also i want to decorate this tank and make it like so that there's more like this is such a plain tank and I feel really bad for Hoku because there's like nothing in here for him to play with so I want to make like live plants in here and some wood and rocks and then maybe excuse me some fish also I want to do some tiger barbs possibly some tetras in here but yeah so for fish I don't know convicts they work, but they're just not working the way I wanted to. And honestly, for fish and turtle tanks, it's trial and error. It really is trial and error. You never know how it's going to work out. Turtles' personalities are different. In fact, there's actually a person who commented on one of my videos and on that fish video and actually summed it up perfectly. Like, they summed it up basically everything I kind of wanted to say. I, I just sometimes I just don't know how to use my words to explain my brain, but that's just me. Um, let's see what's over here in the chat. I'm sorry. Okay. So what size tank do you have Hoku in? This is a 29 gallon. It is very small and I want to upgrade him very badly. And so that is what the plan is. I don't know if you guys know that this is here, but I can't move the camera. But there is this plastic rack here that the axolotl is on. And so I want to get a heavy dutier one because a heavy dutier, a more heavy duty one because, um, I, I kind of feel like it's kind of sketched with this 15 gallon tank on top of it. Um, and so I want to make that into like a heavy duty stand. And then I can put a 40 gallon breeder to upgrade um, Hoku so he can have more space to swim around. And I don't know, maybe turn this into a musk turtle tank. Although I've, you guys know, I've been saying that I wanted to do this for literally months, but I'm just telling you right now, being in like high school and living life can get crazy busy. So I apologize if that annoys you that I keep saying I want to do things and then they kind of just they're slowly happening though like they really are I'm hoping for Christmas that this should all be done um I'm gonna go here to the end of the chat because I need to get caught up um Jonathan says white cloud minnows would also be good with turtles yes those would also be a pretty good um choice because they're pretty fast as well and kind of smaller they like to school um, I've actually wanted to try some white clouds with the axolotl, but I don't actually have a local fish store around here that sells them that are actually healthy. So I'm kind of just waiting for a chance to go snag them at a better place than Petchmo. Um, okay, I'm looking into it. I want them to be comfortable. Yes. Um, the axolotl, how much was he? He was... $30 at an expo. Um, I have a 40 gallon breeder for my turtle. Yes, 40 gallon breeders are actually quite a good size to start off most turtles. But of course, if you have like a big, big red eared slider, you're going to want something bigger. But especially if you're starting with a smaller or younger turtle, 40 gallon breeders are great. That's right, Christy. Um, Jay Jason says it should be just let it heat up for a few minutes. I'm not sure 
what you're talking into reference. Um, Mimi5 asks, how old is your turtle? So Hoku back here was born in October of 2017. No, 2016. So that would make him... Oh my gosh, he's like two years old now. He's two years old now. Um, Jonathan says, both of these fish species are fast, fast and also cheap. So if the turtle does eat them, it's not a huge waste of money. Yep, white cloud mountain minnows. Might have to try those soon. Kelvin asks, what heater are you using? Um, up here, it is a Eheim Jagger 150 watt, 125 watt. Um, the Crafty J asks, are you Filipino? Yes, that is my ethnicity. I am Filipina. Um, what else? Thank you. I will try it, says Gemma. Okay. Um, hello there. Love your videos. Nice to see you. I like the... <laughs> I'm telling you, I really can't talk. Nice to see you live. It's good to see you here, Justin. Thank you. Um, oh, hello. Hello, Flynn. And Camp Matthew says, okay, thank you. Could axolotls walk around out of water. So axolotls are actually fully aquatic animals. I don't know. Yeah, like you guys have seen, what am I doing? They have those gills. And so these gills are what allow them to breathe in the water. It's actually pretty cool because like the capillaries and stuff. Um, so they, but they can't, um, <laughs> they can't um, walk out of the water. They need, they are fully aquatic and need to stay in the water. They're basically like fish, but they just look really weird and different. Um, okay, so I was just, um, told by someone over here my family um that we need to shout somebody out so we're gonna shout somebody out i want to shout out my friend katie we actually went to go watch a movie today we watched fantastic beasts the crimes of grindelwald now i'm not gonna spoil anything because i'm not terrible like that um but we went to go see it with her and a couple other friends of mine and it was pretty good movie it was slightly disorganized but you got to go see it for yourself i mean if you're a harry potter fan you can't not watch it i mean there was like some interesting things that were shared in it but i'm not gonna tell you because i'm not a person who spoils things i'm not mean like that so yeah shout out to katie and all the people who you watched the movie with today also what hogwarts house are you guys in i am gryffindor because i'm crazy and adventurous sometimes kind of a little reckless anyway let's get back into the chat could axolotls walk around out of the water and answer that metabonism is a turtle flu is it i am not sure what you're referring to turtle 101 care um melvin says oh, okay turtle girl can you keep a one turtle in a 29 gallon until you upgrade to a 40 gallon breeder or 55 now really what i always say is always get the biggest size tank that you can feasibly accommodate because it'll just be easier in the long run and it also depends on the size of the turtle you are getting initially so when i first got hoku he was just about three inches so i knew he would fit in this tank but since now that he's growing and i see like how much he actually is using all the space in the tank ooh, i just hit the thing um but now that i see that he's utilizing all the space in the tank um i want to uh I want to get a, give him something more. And so especially if you're adopt using the four inch law or if you are getting from a in-store place where they can only sell turtles over four inches, I would just go ahead and start with a 40 breeder or a 55 gallon. Um, about the wild, the people that works in the pet store gets their money, pets from the wild in order to make money. I do not know if that is true, Stephen. I'd have to look into that. OMG, I'm Filipino. Yeah, Filipino um you should just get the 75 gallons so you won't have to upgrade again see that is the thing um bryce i would absolutely love to have more bigger tanks but as you can see this corner that i have here is really not that big and i share a room with some of my sisters and so i don't have that much space to work with um, but I would just like to get him a small upgrade for the time being. And then maybe if I ever move out or we just get more space, then I can get them bigger tanks. Um, let's see. What else do we have here? 
Hi, you have a cool turtle. I have a yellow belly turtle named Baby Leo. He's a hybrid yellow belly and red ear. That is really cool. You know, I really do love red eared sliders and yellow bellied sliders. I just don't think I'd be able to house them because I'm already like stuck with small tanks. Um, but maybe one day when I get more space, I would love to rescue because I know there's so many unwanted red eared sliders and yellow bellied sliders. So that is really cool, Anthony. Christian says, Hello, I am a long time fan is it possible to cast clay into a mold to use as an effective hardscape in a turtle tank and does it hold up against scratching over a decent period of time that is very interesting christian um chris i'm sorry you said your name you typed it as just chris okay anyway um i would not know the answer to that that it would be a really interesting project. But see, my concern would be like leaching chemicals, especially because it's sitting in the water. I don't know how well that would hold up. And you might just want to try um, siliconing rocks together or stuff that you already know will not break down in the water. Um, but that would be something really cool to look into. Um, that sounds really fun. Ruby Mix says, I'm Gryffindor, Gryffindor too. Oh, yeah. Um, Crystal says, do you speak Filipino? Uh, I speak a little bit. Contilang. Um, but for the most part, I don't really speak it. I just understand it. And then someone just asked, do you speak Spanish? I'm actually learning Spanish this year. Um, and so, I mean, it's going pretty well. Es, es muy bien. Uh, ¿Qué te gusta hacer? What do you guys like to do? I don't know. Um, so I do speak a little bit of Spanish. But for the most part, I kind of just understand languages. I just don't have the confidence to speak them or even really know how to formulate my sentences in like the proper grammatical way or whatever. But I do understand actually like the English and I also understand Filipino, Spanish, and a little bit of Italian. Um, is it okay if your turtle sleeps on its basking spot? Yeah, so in my, I, I've seen different answers for this from different people. For me, I just don't worry about it. I feel that my turtle knows what he needs so if he feels like he needs to sleep out on the basking area he'll can do he can do that and if he needs to sleep in the tank he can do that i think turtles can hold their breath for like 20 minutes i don't know that could be wrong but i've seen my turtles sleep underwater i've seen them sleep in the basking area so i just let them do what they do and just make sure that there's no drowning hazards or anything if they are like sleeping in the water um you are so behind in chat. Yeah, I am. I'm sorry. I'm working on it. Um, let's see. Love turtles, says Anthony. I do love them too. Then what do you think the pet owners get their pets from? Um, and Jonathan just told you, Stephen, most order from wholesalers. That is correct. And that's just a totally different topic that I am honestly not that well educated in. So I'm not going to go into that. Um, I speak Latin dead language but that's very helpful for when learning scientific names because those scientific names are all in latin um i'm thinking the wild um okay sorry going with the clay question it all depends on the type of clay and how it is casted you can do it but i would be hot but it would be hard to find a non-toxic clay sealant ah uh, so shelled reptiles um he also keeps a lot of turtles he's pro he's kept them longer than me he's definitely kept them longer than me um, so I would take his advice as pretty solid. Um, I just got this, says down the wormhole. Hello, D. Angela's Fish Tanks. Hello. Hello, everyone who's coming into the chat. Um, a plus in Spanish. Ooh, Adrian, do you speak Spanish? No worries about being behind or missing chats. It's just a side effect of talking to all of us at the same time. I know, right, Nisi? You guys, this is very, it's just like trying to talk to your group that's like, everyone's talking to you at the same time anyway it's it's okay i'm just doing my best um how what kind of filter do you use oh now i'm caught up on chat so you guys can ask more questions <laughs> what kind of filter do you use and koi's the big fish good for turtles so for filters i've also done videos on this before i think i've actually done videos on basically everything except feeding vegetables to your turtles but for filters i use um the aqua clear hang on back series of power filter i just really like these filters i find that they're pretty reliable and generally pretty silent and then so i like power filters remember you want to try to filter at least 
two times the size of your aquarium or the amount of water volume. So this is a 29 gallon tank and this filter filters 70 gallons. So we're over that two times. Um, you can go all the way up to three times, but sometimes on smaller tanks like this, it's kind of hard to over filter them that much because the power of the filter is just too strong. So I just have a 70, um, an aqua clear 70 power filter. And then for larger tanks, um, my go-to is canister filters because they have a lot of room for media and media is what holds your beneficial bacteria. So it really helps you break down all that ammonia and waste. So canister filters are great. And then what was the other part of that question? And are koi is the big fish good for turtles? So koi and turtles, I don't really know if they would mix. I, I haven't really thought about it just because I don't have space for koi because koi get huge. I'd imagine in a turtle pond where they have a chance to get away from the turtle and when the turtle is more vegetarian and not a carnivorous turtle. So say a full grown red eared slider that is thriving on veggies and pellets, you might be able to keep koi with them. But my fear is that sometimes the turtles might just take a bite out of your koi and koi aren't really cheap fish so i don't know um okay um would you get more pets in the future yes i definitely want more pets in the future right now you guys need to like pray for me because i am really 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 trying hard for a leopard gecko this christmas i'm trying to get um my parents to help me get all these supplies and you might recall a couple months back from my birthday, my dad did give me permission to get a leopard gecko, but now my mom's kind of rethinking it. So mom, if you're watching, I still really want a leopard gecko. In fact, everyone in the chat, drop a thumbs up if you think I should get a leopard gecko. So drop a thumbs up if you think I should get a leopard gecko and say it in chat so that my mom, who's probably watching this, will see that you guys think I should get a leopard gecko too. And so that is one of the pets for the future. Lately, I've also been researching ball pythons, but it's not like I'll get one until I move out. I know that that probably won't happen, but we're still we're still hoping. Um, where was I? Um, can you feed veggies and fruits to turtles? So yes, you can feed veggies and fruits. Ha! It's funny you bring that up because that is the one video I haven't made yet. But yes, you can feed veggies and fruits to turtles. So fruits, um, I generally don't feed fruits to my turtles. I don't know why. I just never really have because it doesn't seem like something they would always eat in the wild. But this recommendation that I was given by a list that was compiled by a bunch of other turtle keepers was feed your turtles. Um, I just lost my train of thought. Feed your turtles like one tablespoon or one teaspoon. One of those. I'd probably go with teaspoon just to be on the safe side. It probably is tablespoon, but it doesn't hurt to be on the safe side. But one tablespoon of fruits a week, and that can be strawberries, blueberries. You know, I should just probably post the link to that um, list, but uh, I know that I'm pretty sure that like strawberries and blueberries are okay. And then for veggies, yes, veggies. There's honestly no such thing as too many veggies as long as just, as the, as long as it is a veggie that is safe for them to eat so say romaine lettuce red leaf lettuce um, collard greens things to avoid are things like spinach because those actually bind um ox they actually have oxalic acid something like that which binds calcium and makes it hard for them to actually have calcium so avoid spinach and stuff but again if you really do want to know more about veggies, you can do more of your own research. And I feel really bad saying that, but I just, guys, life has been crazy. Anyway, let's go. Oh, look at all these thumbs up. See, we really need to get a leopard gecko in here, guys. Um, okay. Uh, all these thumbs up. All these thumbs up. I need more pets. I agree. Um, LOL. Thank you for doing what you do. I love all your videos and look forward to them. My turtle and I always enjoy. Keep the good work. Thank you so much, Chris. I really, really appreciate that. Honestly, you guys are just so nice. You, you, you warm my heart. Thank you for being amazing. Um, I think we'll probably actually go for a little bit longer. Um, Fish Nerd Vlog says, I just got an axolotl. Any, oh, sorry. I, See, I, like, read that right, but then my brain thought it said something else, so I stopped. Anyway, Fish Nerd Vlog says, I just got an axolotl. Any care tips that you've learned over your course of keeping them? So, Fish Nerd Vlogs, here is my advice to you. Whenever you see an axolotl turd, one of their poops, take your turkey baster and suck it out 
and do water changes often because I found that if you leave poop in there for any like long amount of time, the entire tank can get super bacteria-y and really, really gross. So for instance, when I just left over the weekend, um, left over the weekend for a trip and I just left the axolotl home, someone came by and fed him. But when I came back, it was just super gross because no one had changed the water. Um, because I, I, yeah, no one had changed the water. So do water changes often. And what else? What other tips? If you can get them bull trained, get them bull trained. It's a lot easier to get them to eat bloodworms and stuff that way. Um, yeah, those are my tips. Um, would it be a good idea to, okay, we'll take a couple more questions. Let me get caught up. Hello, shelled reptiles, says Crystal. Um, Ruby Mix says, what would you name Leopard Gecko? Honestly, I have no idea. I'd have to see it first. But probably something from Avatar The Last Airbender because I love that show. Or um, a Disney theme name because Disney. Um, Mimi says, I'm getting a turtle for Christmas and your videos help so much. Thank you. I am really excited to hear that, Mimi. It's always fun to get a new pet. Everyone is saying hello. Um, Kobe Duffin says, have you considered getting a bearded dragon? I have. I really have. But they seem a bit more complex in care. I don't know if that's just me. Plus, like, they have to eat greens as adults as in addition to insects, at least from what I've read. Plus, just, like, the whole space thing. Like, again, guys, space is a huge thing for me. I am kind of restricted in how much space I can take up for my animals. So that's why a leopard gecko appealed to me versus a bearded dragon, but I'd love to have one in the future. Um, all right. Can you train the axolotl to poo in a separate bowl? I don't think you really can do that, Willow. They can eat from a... They can be trained to eat from a bowl, but um, they kind of just go when they gotta go. Um, I named my cats after Avatar character names. Awesome. Awesome. Avatar the Last Airbender, greatest cartoon of all time, my childhood love it if you haven't seen it see it um kobe says true they're very docile yes spirited dragons are super sweet um i hope a le if i ever got a leopard gecko it'd be pretty nice but i guess it's also kind of a subjective thing about like how well they tolerate handling and i guess that depends on how much they've been tamed and all this stuff um and Turtle 101 Care, this will be the um, second to the last question. I'm going to answer the one from Bailey after this, and then we will call it a night. What time is it where you guys are at? Anyway, any tips on a basking spot? Um, if you're going to do a basking spot, first of all, make sure that um, the turtle won't be able to sink it if it's like an intake basking spot. And also, make sure that it's if, it's on, if it is inside the tank, make sure your turtle can't escape because it really can give you a heart attack when your turtle escapes. So make sure that when you have a basking area, it's escape proof, regardless if it's up up above tank the bask. I'm sorry, regardless if it's an above the tank basking area or if it is in the tank, just make sure it's escape proof and then make sure you have the proper lighting. So those are my basking spot tips. Um, Jonathan Dupre says, thank you, I'm heading out, have a good one. Thank you so much, Jonathan. I really appreciate that. Appreciate the support. And then the last one, Bailey says, hey, I am new. I have a painted turtle and I want to put some fish in it in his tank. Is this a good idea? For some reason, I get a lot of fish questions. Um, it is really a hit or miss. Honestly, you just have to experiment. And I would suggest trying fish that are faster and that are kind of smarter. So maybe something like a tiger barb or a tetra. You can try convict cichlids like I have or cichlids, but cichlids can also be kind of aggressive, so that can also be an issue. But it's really something you just have to try until you find out what works for you and your turtle. All right, so we are going to close this thing down because I'm actually watching another movie tonight with some more friends because it's Friday. Hooray. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Also a huge, huge, huge shout out to all of my patrons over on Patreon day over, over on Patreon day. I'm sorry. I just mixed up my thoughts again. A huge shout out to my patrons over on Patreon um, because today is actually Patreon appreciation day. So to all of my patrons over on Patreon, I said that like three times, but I like the Turtle Tribe, you guys are the best. I know I haven't been super active on Patreon, and I'm very, very sorry for that. But I'm planning some new content. I just, ugh, you guys mean the world to me. 
So thank you for those of you who support over on Patreon. I see Nisi's in the chat. She is one of my patrons. Um, I just I just love you guys. I just love you guys. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. This was super fun. Maybe we'll have to do it again. I don't know. Um, but let me know if you have any video ideas or anything like that in the comments. So after this is posted, or maybe even right now, you can go down to the comments, leave a comment, because I won't be able to... Well, I will be able to go to see the live chat. But if you want to leave me a comment, um, don't forget to drop a thumbs up on your way out. That would be super great. And thanks for watching. And remember that you guys are totally awesome. All right. Let's end this. Bye-bye. I do want to end it. Okay, bye.